and all the time. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Why don't you do me a favor? Um, I, I can't do this by myself, so please help me, all right? I ask that you turn to the person sitting next to you and tell them just one sentence about what hope means to you. One sentence. What is hope? What is hope? Or what is hope like? Thank you, thank you. I see faces that are smiling. Uh, I think we pretty much have an idea about what our neighbor thinks about hope. Hope. Hope is like a road in the countryside. There was never a road to start with, but when many people walk on it, the road actually comes into existence. Hope. Hope is the thing with feathers that patches on the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. What is hope? Hope is like the sun, which, as we journey towards it, it casts a shadow behind us, the shadow of our burdens. Hope sweetens the memories of our experiences. It tempers our troubles. It befriends us in the dark and lights our path. What hope does is it lends promise to the future and it gives purpose to the past. Hope can turn discouragement into determination. Hope is like a bird, a bird that senses the dawn and carefully starts to sing while it is still dark. In Romans, we are told that we are saved by this hope. We are saved by this. In the book of Romans, we are told that we are saved by this hope. Hope that is not seen. So we are asked to set our eyes above where our help comes from. Welcome, my dearest fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, and little ones. Hello. Hello, children. Welcome to the Hope Concert. I know a young man. He's my good friend. He turned 10 a few days ago in the middle of a fight for his life. He couldn't be here today, but he is here. He and his family agreed to start us off today. Hi, Alvin. I know that you're watching us online. And hi, Mama Alvin, and hi, the grandma to Alvin. I asked Trufena, Alvin's mom, and a few other family members and friends about Alvin. And this is how they chose to describe Alvin. As the video starts to play, Alvin's mother said this, I am the apple of God's eye, but Alvin, Alvin is the apple of my eye. I have seen God's strength in him throughout this ordeal. He has been a strong pillar for himself and for us, and I have a very strong faith and hope for the future. May I ask that we pause it for just a moment? Thank you. Like I was saying, I asked Alvin's mother to describe Alvin. And this is what she had to say. She said, I am the apple of God's eye, but Alvin, Alvin is the apple of my eye. I have seen God's strength in him throughout this ordeal. He's been a strong pillar for himself and us. I have a very strong faith and hope 
for the future. The grandmother to Alvin had this to say about him. Grace Ogonda. To me, he is this pleasant, adorable, considerate, and amiable friend. Very calm and cool young man and sacrificing. She also had a few words for Alvin's mom, Trufena. She said, she is my loving and caring, understanding, respectful, and responsible friend, but can be explosive when rattled. Though forgiving at the same time, when I'm away, I know that my matters are safe with her being around. A friend to Alvin called Steve Kisukwa had this to say about him. For me, Alvin is the epitome of valiance. And he had this to say about Alvin's mother. Trufena is an altruistic mother, admired by all. Finally, Jonah Nyango had this to say about Alvin. He said, Alvin is a calm superboy, a deacon at heart, very quiet and observant, but very talented. The boy has a smile for many days. And he also had this to say about Alvin's mother. He actually said this. Truth, mtunguyas. A real survivor and a strengthener. Nakubali, the great ukonayo mse. Truth, ni mse wakujituma mbaya. And does all that is needed with a smile, even when it is hard. Alvin's story is a story of hope. He and his family graciously agreed to shoot this video to share with us their story today. And this is the story of Alvin. I'm a member of Nairobi Central Estate Church. I was on my way to school. Uh, we stopped by the hospital to collect my test results. We are not our business actually. We were just going to take the test results and uh, after that I was going to work and I was dropping Alvin off to school. But uh, things changed when we got the results from the doctors and um, Alvin had to be admitted immediately. I had I had something that was going in my neck, it was getting bigger and bigger. The doctor said that it was not his health. Later, later on, I was told that I had cancer. Hello, my name is Grace Ogonda from Nairobi Central SDS Church. I am Alvin's grandmother. I just wish to share a bit of the experience from the time we got the news of Alvin's sickness. And this was on 6th of uh, February, 2023. Uh, we just had uh, a very wonderful program in Akuru where Pastor Ted Wilson was addressing the congregant. He had come for a visit. And uh, the message I thought was really for me because it was telling us to get involved. Christ is coming soon. And I was still digesting this message. The other bit of it was that uh, we don't get distracted, but to, be, to keep focusing on Christ himself and to remain united as a church. So here was a situation whereby I was still thinking and trying to understand the message and apply it to myself that um, we don't get distracted. Christ is coming soon. And the news came with a bang. And the news came as uh, we had already finished the program and we were moving uh, back to Nairobi. So I was with my three pastors and the first person I, sh I shared the news was with uh, Pastor Nyaga. He had to stop and uh, we prayed together. 
The other pastor got the news and the prayers continued. So even in spite of that, the first 72 hours was quite devastating. It was so terrifying. I tried to be strong as uh, the grandmother to Al Al Alvin and also as a mother to my children. But we are all human. Somehow I broke down. And we all broke down as a family. But we still did not lose the focus that God is in control. And one thing that I would really want to thank God for is that these things happened during the time when we were as a family on our fast. We were doing a fast uh, with water, and this had gone on for a whole week. And somehow, somebody would expect that perhaps we were prepared for what was happening. But uh, all the same, the news of cancer can be so devastating, and that is where it was. We were all broken. At first, uh, we had gone to an ENT, and um, he said that he's going to refer us to an oncology. But we didn't know exactly that we were going to see an oncology. He just said that uh, the doctor in charge was going to check us and tell us exactly what was happening. But he just said that it was lymphoma. So when we got there, he said that uh, we first look at what is the problem, the growth, and then now we discuss what the other issue is. So we had to look at first the growth, which was uh, life is in nature. And she was afraid that it might spread, so we needed to admit him very fast. I thought it was fun to admit it. It became very hard. <sighs> Confusion. You know, um, when you hear the word cancer, it's such a big name. And so many things go through your head. And um, I was confused. I was, um, I was confused. I didn't know what to do. Uh, we were crying. <laughs> because uh, we didn't expect it to go that direction. We were hoping for something else other than cancer. So sadly, it was that, it was cancer. The word cancer is something that you'd rather hear from somebody else, and not something that you like to hear at home. Cancer is horrible. And worse still, the treatment that is used for cancer can be also terrible the so-called chemotherapy. I saw Alvin go through it and many a times my heart would actually break when I saw what he was going through. There was this particular drug that as he was getting it, it's the child just changes all of a sudden. And we'd cry with him. Okay, we try, see as a mother, you don't want to have the child see you cry. But it's so painful and uh, in empathy and in such a situation it was, a not, it was not easy to contain. But what I can say about this experience with cancer, having seen Alvin go through it, that we serve a mighty God. The God who held him through it all. There are instances that you would even be expecting the worst to happen. I remember one, one morning, the mother was so tired and broken after Alvin had just had um, the IT chemo. So I came in and asked her to go and have some rest in the car. And uh, the doctor came as Alvin now was waking up from uh, the effect of the anesthesia. And when the doctor observed his mouth, the wounds and blisters had started developing. And uh, this was the resident doctor. So the doc this resident doctor went and called the oncologist. That was Alvin's doctor, Dr. Mbatia. When she came and examined the child, she wanted to prepare me that, Mom, it's going to be bad because the blisters have started developing so soon and the treatment is going on. We are trying to do the rescue. But when he wakes up and in a position to start eating, encourage him to eat the best that he can because tomorrow it might be so, so bad. But I always knew that Jesus will heal me. 
It was sad seeing my mom cry. She was devastated. I didn't really understand why. But this hope came from the, uh, the following day it might be so bad and the child may not be able to eat or uh, to do anything much. But you know, when the meals came and Alvin was allowed to have his meal, he ate normally. And uh, the worst that we were expecting never occurred. God upheld him. And those terrible blisters were there, okay, but they were not as the doctor had actually indicated. So what am I trying to say? That God, we serve a mighty God, the God of the universe. He carried Alvin through it all to the extent that he has now done the four circles. And this is something that can encourage somebody else. Whoever may be struggling with cancer or um, other devastating condition, we actually serve a living God. And as a family, we have decided that we choose hope over fear. Wow, I the church family, my family members, uh, my friends, they were really supportive. Um, people were actually praying from, I mean, all over the world. Uh, there were groups which were formed to pray with us to stand up that's the gap. Uh, the church family was there. Um, they had even to be on standby, on call, just in case we needed encouragement. We had a WhatsApp group where we'd just pray and uh, encourage one another on that platform. Uh, my friends were really supportive. Uh, my employer also was really, really supportive. And we thank God that everybody came through for us at that time. Cancer has taught me that um, we have to rely on God through and through. Um, it has taught me that um, you know, I had to put everything on hold just to actually uh, concentrate on Alvin. And um, it taught me that I have to take things slower. This experience has taught me that God is a God of miracles miracles and nothing is impossible with him. Remember who are the most important things in life? God big fast, family, friends, and um, I shouldn't worry about the small things in life and the Bible that God answers prayers. I am not afraid anymore. God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse I choose hope over fear. I choose hope over fear. I choose hope over fear. reasons to be thankful so many reasons to praise the lord welcome, welcome to, to the, the hope concert hosted by the glorious choral nairobi central sda church well happy you're here today our glorious choral children in conjunction with the church choir the youth choir and our drama band would like you and you and you to know that we appreciate you taking time to join us as we celebrate this musical extravaganza as we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving to a god who hears and answers prayers we have a fantastic program lined up for you yes to our visitors we want you to know that jesus is happy that you are in his house may god's blessings surround you as you worship with us today to all in attendance may god continue to pour his love and blessings into your lives now angie i have always been fascinated by the story of david isn't it amazing how God helped a little boy to slay a giant that made the hearts of the mighty warriors of Israel melt with fear? 
fascinating indeed. But what's more amazing than warriors who fight for Jesus to their death, not with swords and spears, but with hearts of love, with hope, with hope and, of, and with love, like Stephen the martyr. Amazing! Just for him to look up into heaven before he died and see the face of his Savior assuring him that it is not hopeless. What about those faithful servants of the Lord who, though not actively in battle, hold up the hands of others? Ah, Aaron and Hern. Hmm, you may be wondering what all this has to do with the Hope concert, right? Well, fasten your seatbelts because you are about to find out. It is with great pleasure that the Nairobi Central SDA Glorious Choral Choir invites you to join us as we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But first, let's pull out our Bibles and turn to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, our verse for the day. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen. Thank you very much, Angela and Stephanie. Another loud amen. amen. Yes, indeed, Lord. God has given us not a spirit of fear. We have a hope, a hope that all that is happening around us that besets us, sets us back, troubles us, will one day come to an end. Therefore, join me if you have a hope in the coming of the Lord as we sing this hymn, 214, We Have This Hope. Let's all rise as we sing the hymn, We Have This Hope. We'll do both stanzas. We are united 
in Christ. At this point in time, I will invite the congregation to spend at least 30 seconds Pray for a family somewhere affected by cancer. Praying for hope. Then I will close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, because you are a God of hope. That even when we have certain things that make our hearts tremble, you have assured us of our place that when we go, we shall have no more diseases, pain, or sorrow. And it is in this hope, Lord, we are looking for this evening, remembering that all of us are affected in one way or on another. But we thank you because of your promise of your coming. Therefore, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be amongst us in this worship service. As we encourage each and every one of us to be filled with hope, not fear, for you have not given us a spirit of fear. We pray even now for that somebody who is lying somewhere on a bed, wondering if there is hope. We pray for that one person who has just been diagnosed and they are confused they've been diagnosed with cancer. We pray, Lord, that you shall whisper a very tender voice unto them that they shall hear your word of hope amidst confusion and chaos. We thank you because you have assured us that victory is ours. And thank you for this session. Holy Spirit, come and minister to us through the children, the youth, and even the church choir and the drama club. But above all, minister to each and every one of us to be filled and to spread this hope to they that shall hear the sound of our voices and even beyond this service. Keep us in the faith till you come back, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Inspired by the story of Alvin, the children began to think about what they could possibly do. And they thought about a hope concert for cancer patients, survivors, those who have suffered loss, and those who have spent countless hours, days, and years taking care of their loved ones. Today, church, you are going to listen to their stories, raw stories from these people. You're going to listen to stories of fight, stories of grief, stories of loss, stories of triumph, and stories of victory. In that process, it is our hope that you can share with them the Lord's hope through heavenly messages and heavenly music. As we asked when we invited you for this hope concert, that you arm yourself only with five things. Your prayers, a listening heart, a loving shoulder, a supportive and cheerful spirit, and, and an offering. And I still remember the day when we, when, when Alvin had to be admitted and you just listened to Alvin's story. Jonah Nyango, myself, Steve Kisukwa, we, we, we went to the hospital where he was admitted. And in the weeks that followed, this church spent a good amount of time sending in supportive contributions for Alvin. It was echoed from everywhere. The pulpits, social media, and all the platforms where you people are. It has been 
of immense help. We remember that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. We lean on him because we know that when we are weak, then we are strong. The church choir and the youth choir and the drummer band have also graciously agreed to be with us here today to join in this concert. Now, we are going to begin the first session, which is titled, The Battle is the Lord's. And these two beautiful ones are going to tell us the story of David and Goliath before we have the glorious choral sing, and then we will listen to a story. God bless you. faith do you think it takes somebody to do something that people consider impossible? What do you mean, Lucinda? When I say impossible, I mean something that people think can't be done. You know, like when David killed Goliath. I really don't know. All I do know is that Jesus said, if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, then you can move mountains. Well, church, we may not be able to slay real-life giants in our lifetime, but we do have giants that we face in our lives. Yes, like cancer. Fighting cancer may feel like standing in a battlefield fighting Goliath, but like David, let us not be afraid or discouraged. Always remember that the, the battle, battle is the Lord's. Jesus, de in Psalms 41 verse 3, the, G David says, The Lord nurses those who are sick and restores them to health. Well, so to our brothers and sisters facing the battles of their lives with cancer, we pray that you'll choose hope over fear because... Jesus is a God, God of, of miracles. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever might believe it shall not perish but have everlasting life.
Indeed, he is a God of miracles. And because he heals our diseases and restores our bodies, we want to sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. I want to tell you a Bible story now. Can I have some fun with it? Sure. Great. It's about a young boy called as David, the shepherd boy who fought. Goliath. 
Very good. Now David used to take care of his daddy's sheep while he was while his oldest brothers were out doing people what people considered very important like fighting wars, keeping people safe. But one day, one day David's daddy tells him, David, come here. Uh, David, I want to send you somewhere, okay? okay? I want you, you see here, I have some grain for you, some fruits, and, and your slingshot I know you like playing around with. Now, take these to the battlefield and take them to their brother. Take, take them to your brothers, okay? okay? Hurry up, go. You see? That's what David did. And when he went, who do you think he saw? He saw Goliath. Goliath. <clears throat> Who will come and fight? Come on out, you Israelites. Choose a man to fight. Come on, Israelites. Goliath. Goliath. Am I not a Philistine? Moses. Am I not a Philistine? Are you not all slaves of soul? Find, find a man amongst you or something that resembles to one and let them fight us. If you defeat us, <laughs> We will be their slaves. <laughs> I mean, even I cannot have a straight face while saying that. But in the event that we defeat you, I will take you and make you mush. I will squeeze you and I will make you all our servants here. Your God cannot protect you from me. Find a man. Let him come and fight me. <laughs> Goliath, stomp, stomp. Goliath, stomp, stomp. David heard him brag. Leave five stones into his bag. Ran to fight his fisty fight. He would meet the giant, Goliath, Goliath. So David went to the rippling brook and he took five smooth stones. And then he looked up to heaven and said this prayer. Let's pray together, everyone, hands together, hands folded. What do you think he told God? He must have said, God, I am just a poor shepherd boy. You know I can't kill a giant, but you can. I have faith that you can slay this giant. Maybe he said, you helped me kill the lion and the bear who attacked my sheep. You can drive the Philistines back to where they came from. I am willing to obey you. Deal with that giant however you see fit. And do it through me. I open up myself as a vessel. That giant has mocked you. He has openly defiled you. Use me to fight this giant, Lord. Amen. You can send plagues, pillars of fire. You can split the earth open and make them swallow mountains. I seek your face in prayer, Lord, to do these wonderful miracles for your children. Amen. These are just stones. They cannot do anything, but if you pack your power inside them, Goliath won't even know what hit him. Amen. Goliath. 
Goliath. Can you imagine what happened when Goliath saw this little boy who wanted to fight him? Oh boy, was he mad. Am I a dog? Goliath asked that you choose rocks to do your task. Would you like to be bird feed? I'll make you the seed. Goliath. Goliath. David said, David said with twilling sling, You mistake one little thing. Battles aren't won with spears and sword. The battle is the Lord's. Goliath. Goliath. One smooth stone from a little creek bed hit Goliath in the head. There was no more giant to bread. Goliath now was dead. Timber! Yay! <laughs> well, you know the rest of the story, don't you? Now, children, you may fight Goliath, but like David, you, you may face challenges that seem impossible to conquer, such as sickness or death, or even someone you love. When we face these battles, let us face them with five stones. Faith, obedience, service, prayer, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, God will make us bold and strong. Rejoice. Rejo? Rejoice. For the promise of your God is to? 
to bless your coming in and to bless your going and to bless your going out. How wonderful. The next story that you're about to listen to is the story of Debbie. Debbie and the mother are in the audience today, right now. I'm actually looking at them. I wonder whether they would love to stand and just wave to the congregation. I, I have taught Debbie in, in teens class and in the colleges class, but when I asked Debbie's family and friends to say, to, give, to describe her, I had things I would never have learned as her teacher. This is Juan. Juan is Debbie's sister, eldest sister, teacher Josephine's first daughter. Now, you'll notice a common theme throughout the description of Debbie in this story. Juan says, Debbie is definitely the calmest version of all of us siblings. She has always had a knack for making the toughest moments feel like a breeze. Her genuineness is in a smile. For us, it's all in Debbie's eyes and smile. Through it all, she has always had that smile and her determination. Four sentences cannot do justice to say everything about Debbie, so I'll just say, she's my small sister. Always will be so. We love you, Debbie. Debbie's mom, Josephine, had this to say about Debbie. Debbie is just a calm, there goes that word again, and cool girl. She's very easy to handle and appreciative of every small gesture offered. It is rare to find a patient, a patient who says thank you to a service offered or sorry when they mess up. Though an introvert, she does not panic. She's a, she's a child with her own principles and she follows them well, very keen with her work and focused. Debbie has another sister called Dama. Dama had this to say about Debbie. Dama said, Debbie is, and here goes that word again, and, and they didn't know that they were all sending in this. Debbie is very calm and relaxed, even in stressful and challenging situations. She's gentle and sensitive. Abba, and being the little sister, she is deeply loved by all of us. Their college teacher, Eric, had this to say about Debbie. Debbie Odek is a very jovial student in the college class who has a positive outlook on life. She radiates friendliness, happiness, warmness, and calmness. She's always ready to take up roles and responsibilities as they arise. Debbie's, Debbie's interesting trait is that she will laugh at life, always. How hard school is, yet at the t same time, have the discipline to put in the work. Debbie is going places. Finally, Diana, who is Debbie's close friend, best friend to say, had this to say about Debbie. Debbie is a hopeful and determined soul. Her cancer journey was not easy but she forged on knowing that the Lord would heal her. At no point in time did she seclude herself from any activity we did as friends. And she still continues soaring to greater heights in everything she does. This is the story of Debbie. To be played on the screen.
Hi, my name is Debbie Odek from Nairobi Central SDA Church. I come from the Odek family and at the age of 11, I was diagnosed with a tumor. Uh, it was by the grace of God that my mom discovered it and it needed urgent care and attention and immediate arrest. My name is Josephine Odek, a member of Nairobi Central SDA Church and I've been a caregiver to Debbie and uh, our journey has not been easy, but we thank God. God has given me the grace to carry it through. At that young age, I didn't know what cancer was. I would always just hear the word cancer, but I would never, I never fully understood it. My experience, this is how my journey started. Started with a lot of tests here in Kenya uh, for about one to two months. Then we headed over to India where they also did a few tests before the removal of the tumor. The surgery day arrived, and as I was heading to the theater, I was so scared, but my mom just whispered in my ear, Jesus is with you all the way, do not be afraid. And he was with me all the way for six hours of surgery and three days in the ICU. Some of the processes as a caregiver, like consents that you have to make, the decisions you have to make, as the doctors consult, there are sometimes you don't know what to do because others are, they give you pros and cons of every procedure. And as a parent and a caregiver, you have to consent. And sometimes you don't know what you are consenting about, whether it is negative or positive. I was taken back to the ward uh, where I recovered and healed. And I knew for sure that I was coming back home. Uh, little did I know that I would be there for three more months. Uh, the doctors came in and told me that I had to go through chemo. Again, I didn't know what chemo was. I was still young, so I was like, why do I have to go through chemo? But then, of chemo, uh, for me, chemo wasn't the best. The drug made me feel tired, weak, uncomfortable, restless. I lost a lot of weight, I lost appetite, I lost all my hair, food and what I even tasted so sour and bitter in my mouth. Um, I remember my veins also turned black, uh, my fingernails also turned black. I was injected a lot during that process and my skin was pricked a lot to the point where I was unfazed by needles. Um, it came to the last day of chemo and I knew for sure I was gonna go back home once the doctors gave me the go. Unfortunately, that night, uh, during that, that last night, uh, I had to be rushed to hospital because there was a complication that arose. Um, I was vomiting all the time. I couldn't keep anything in. And during that time that I was admitted in the hospital, uh, I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't drink anything. So everything was just being fed to me through a drip and I was kept hydrated through a drip. But thanks be to God, after two weeks, I could finally come back home. Even as a caregiver, especially when you are a caregiver in a foreign land, it becomes difficult because you are all alone. Nobody is there to assist you. There are no people who come to visit you in hostel. You are all alone, 24 hours. You are taking care. So even sometimes you can't sleep. Sometimes you can't eat. So you become weak and uh, tired. After we came back home, uh, a few, around two years passed, um, where I had to go back to hospital for a minor surgery and after that the surgery was successful but unfortunately after that surgery I had to come back to hospital again because the complication I had while in India came back and I had to go back to hospital I was admitted I had to go through surgery again so I just want to give God thanks because he has taken me through three successful surgeries. During my journey, I had people who encouraged me. 
I remember there were some Christian nurses in the world who would always come to me and talk to me and just give me some encouraging words. I also remember I had doctors who became my friends who would also come and talk to me. Uh, I also remember my family and friends, children ministry who would always video chat me and just pray with me and also give me some encouraging words. And then I remember I also trusted in God's healing power. And how can I forget uh, my mom's and I theme song that we used to sing each and every single day. There wasn't a day that would pass that we wouldn't sing this song. It was from the hymnal, song number 522. My hope is built on nothing less. As a caregiver, I remember this verse that God gave me, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and uh, power and a sound mind. So that is the verse that keep, kept me going during that period. And I want to thank God for seeing me through. To those battling cancer and the cancer survivors, remember that your illness does not define your life. Uh, you're a beloved child of God. You have a great purpose and just hold on to hope and let your journey be a testament of your faith and resilience. My advice to the parents, kindly uh, check your children, be free with them, once in a while examine them, bathe them. As you bathe, you can be able to discover anything. So just, just as a parent, be close to your child, be very close to your child, allow them to tell you what they need to tell you. And I'm advising you, don't ignore, don't ignore any swelling in a child's body, don't ignore any pain in a child's body, and to the children, don't ignore. If you find, uh, you notice a swelling somewhere, report to your parents. So I would just like to encourage all the caregivers, hang on there. Uh, if God has given your patient more years to take care of them, take care of them to the very end, don't give up. When the doctors mentioned cancer, I just wanted it to fully go away because I knew cancer wasn't a good thing. Cancer just brought bad news. Even as a caregiver, especially when you are a caregiver in a foreign land, it becomes difficult because you are all alone. Nobody's there to assist you. There are no people who come to visit you in hostel. You are all alone, 24 hours. You are taking care. So even sometimes you can't sleep. Sometimes you can't eat. So you become weak and uh, tired. I would just like to give thanks to all my family members and a special thanks to my mom who was with me throughout the journey, even though at times she would hide something so that uh, I wouldn't feel like it was really a really, really bad situation. I want to also thank God for uh, giving her the strength to endure everything and for just being there with me and praying for me always. I want to thank, uh, first of all, God for bringing a strong support group I want to thank the family, my family members. They came strong and supported us fully. I want to thank the church who are praying and even supporting. At one time, we didn't have enough finances for a session for chemo. And the church, through the Chilean ministry, acted very fast and we got funds for the chemo. And I want to thank all of you for praying and supporting financially. Hi, my name is Debbie. I choose hope over fear. I choose hope over fear. Wow, Debbie is such an inspiration. Isn't the power of prayer amazing? Like Daniel, let us all strive to find that quiet space where we can seek God's face to help us face the challenges in life. I will find my own sacred room away from 
all of the noise of the world.
Jesus changes how many things? Everything. Everything. And, and, and the little children sang about, I will find my own little sacred room. I will circle back to that. For now, a wonderful church choir agreed to come and sing a song called Kisha Nikaona. It's a song about the new heaven and the new earth. I don't think there's anything as hopeful as we hoping one day to see Jesus. And I think this would be a great way for them to introduce the second session, actually. Um, they only ask us in the second stanza of their song that when we believe in Jesus, Jesus will make it so. Welcome, church choir.
Thank you, church choir. Isn't the church choir lovely? It's, 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 it's been a while, and it seems like they've got more members, younger ones for that matter. They're there as well. I don't know. I think they removed the qualification requirement that you come with a kasambu, isn't you? That has since been removed. Uh, those who are in the youth choir who are looking to quickly graduate, to, the barrier has been removed. But thank you, church choir, for that song. We are grateful that you took the time. Thank you for reminding us to look heavenward. And that's what I mentioned earlier. Now, I happen to have mentioned that Alvin Ogonda and the mother were at home. They are actually in the audience. This is the first time that Alvin is coming to church since February. And I'd like to ask that they stand, if that's fine by them. Alvin, please come. Alvin, is actually, Alvin actually came and stood right next to me. As you can see, he still wears masks. Um, there were points when I know you guys wanted to visit so much, but couldn't. Um, I'm sure, I'm looking at Truth. I don't know, Truth, please stand. Thank you so much, Alvin. Thank you for being strong. And God bless you. Do you want to tell these people anything? Happy Sabbath. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Alvin. Please sit. And, uh, and a big thanks to Debbie and the mother for finding the time to come here on a Wednesday evening. A big thank you to Victor Nyacharo for taking the time to, to shoot those videos. Thank you so much. God bless you. This next session is we could barely find a name for it. See, we, we called the first session The Battle is the Lord's because we had stories of people who were fighting cancer and we had stories of survivors. 
this next session we could only call it we have this hope that burns within our hearts because this session is about the stories of loss and we have two families that have agreed to share their stories with us before they do that the children are here to to share with us the hope that you profess the hope that you believe in the hope that was in the hearts of so many people in the bible but even today is in the hearts of so many people who are seated down here that's the hope that they're about to share with us welcome welcome beautiful children kayla have you ever lost someone you loved well my little cousin got lost in the supermarket i looked for her for a whole hour not that kind of loss. I meant someone die. Well, I lost my uncle sometimes back. It was very hard for the family. We were very sad. It is hard for the family when we lose someone we love, especially if they have been sick for a long time and we pray for them to get better, but they still die. Does the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 and 2, the good people pass away, the godly often die before their time, but no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. Does that mean God wants people to die? No, he doesn't. Unfortunately, we live in a sinful world, and sickness and death is a result of sin. But do you know what? What, Nuru? There is hope. God set in motion this amazing plan to save us. The Bible says he will come back to take us to be with him, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I know that verse. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Yes, this is the hope that burns within our hearts. Verse 18 tells us to encourage each other with these words. Church, let's turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And it says, Brothers, let us not be ignorant about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of the men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and Jesus, with God, will bring those who have fallen asleep in him. Amen? Amen. And just like faithful Stephen, who looked up to the heavens before he was stoned to death, and saw Jesus standing by the right hand side of God, we can look up and remember that through all of our tears and all of our fears, we are not alone.
We are not alone. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 that Jesus, that the Lord that the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged no matter how how no matter how violent the storm is. No matter how violent the storm is, let us hold on to him and he will see us through. Good evening. God is good. And all the time. 
you know, Ellie mentioned that this is a segment of hope. Hope that even when we lose our loved ones, we have an assurance that we'll meet at a place where we'll never part again. So I want us to do this hymn, 449, Never Part Again. It has three stanzas, but I'll introduce a fourth stanza. And that fourth stanza is the fifth line of us of the song Amazing Grace, which says, when we've been there 10,000 what? Years. So once we finish the third stanza, our letters have projected on the screen verse 4, or rather verse 5 of the song Amazing Grace, which will form verse 4 of this song. So let's all rise as we sing as a people who have hope that we will never, never part again. Him number 449. Together. There is a land of pure delight where bliss eternal reigns. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. We traveling to Emmanuel's land, we soon shall hear the trumpet sound, and soon we shall with Jesus reign, and never, never part again. What? Never part again, no, never part again, what, never part again, no, never part again, and soon we shall with Jesus reign, and never, never part again their everlasting spring abides and never with ring flowers and but a little space divides this heavenly land from us we traveling to Emmanuel's land we soon shall hear the trumpet sound and soon we shall with Jesus reign and never never part again what never part again no never part again never part again no never part again and we shall with Jesus reign and never, never part again. Could we but stand where Moses stood and view the landscape home? Not all this world pretended good could ever charm us more. We traveling to Emmanuel's land, we soon shall hear the trumpet 
sound and soon we shall with Jesus reign and never, never part again. What? Never part again. No, never part again. Never part again. No, never part again. And soon we shall with Jesus reign. Never, never part again. When we've been there, when we've been there, Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun With no less days to sing God's praise Than when we had first begun Oh, we are traveling we're traveling to Emmanuel's land. We soon shall hear the trumpet sound, and soon we shall with Jesus reign and never, never part. Again, what never part again? No, never part again. Never part again. No, never part again. And soon we shall with Jesus reign and never, never part again. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. And at this point, I'd like to welcome Mr. Sipokati and and. Salmon and Gladin, his two boys, on June 10th, that was about seven days ago, Mr. Sipakati sent me a video, and, and the video was, it was a video of a collection of the memories that the family had with the with their loved one. And it was the fourth anniversary. And Mr. Sipakati told me that every year, what they do is they make a video and they choose a theme song, which is what will remind them of the memories for that entire year. And this year, that song was Never Part Again. And it was playing in the background. I, I couldn't get myself to watch the entire video. So it's going, to, it's going to play on the screen as I welcome Mr. Sipakati and Gladin and Salmon. You guys know them? You guys know them well? Welcome, Mr. Sipakati. This is their story. Good evening, church. Good evening. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to share our experience on this special day. And before we do that, I would like to assure Mr. Master Alvin that he has had a very gallant soldier praying for him at each moment. Whenever we have a meal, somebody called Salmon could never leave behind the name of Alvin in his prayers. So we are thankful that God has answered, answered those prayers. Yes, I was asked to share on uh, 
a number of things. But to start with, I need to introduce my family. On the far right is the firstborn. His name is Salmon Sipakati Safari. Can you greet the, con the congregation, Salmon? Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Next is Gladin. He popularly refers to himself as the last born. <laughs> Can you greet the congregation, Gladin? Happy Sabbath. Happy yeah, it's Gladin Gashohe Safari. Now, I was asked a question. What was my experience and that of the family during and after the loss? All I can say is that it was a terrible blow. To say that it was agonizing, catastrophic, or devastating would be an understatement, particularly to these young guys. But before I proceed, maybe let me give them their, their, their own opportunity to say anything they remember about their mom. Gladin. Do you, what makes you remember your mom? Anything? Yes. Delicious food. Yeah. This is a man who majors in eating, so... <laughs> there is not much he can say beyond that, but you can understand. Then next is Salmon. Anything you remember about your mom? I can say a lot, but often when I take... I walk around the neighborhood. I'd see children playing and some get hurt. And they go to their friends, their older siblings or friends, telling them that one of them has hurt them. So I see, like, sometimes they want to fight, but I often stop them. So uh, when one of the mothers of the children goes there, they defend their child, saying, why are you beating my child? And more often than not, the one who's being beaten, well, the one who's beating the other child is the one who even has the mistake. So my mom will never defend me coming when she found me fighting. <laughs> so I loved the way she trained me with the right way not to revenge, not to do the wrong things, just apologize and move on with it. Thank you, amen. amen. <clears throat> yeah, so her death came as a very big shock, particularly to these two youngsters who were so naive, they were, I would call them innocent and ignorant of the fact that their mother had been just shortly diagnosed with cancer, which was at stage four. She had been sick, yes, from January 26, 2019, but visiting several hospitals, she had been misdiagnosed. At one time, they claimed she had low protein levels, so she put, they put her on some drugs, which of course could not help anything. Then later on, they said she had a problem with the heart. Again, some drugs which were not necessary. Finally, they said she had TB, and on this one, they, she took so long on those drugs, but there was no improvement. So when we switched to hospitals, we had been to, to two, two big hospitals in town, but when we, we switched to a different doctor, oh, that was in May, May, mid May 2019, that was when we got the right diagnosis. And uh, these young guys were not aware of that. So there is little they knew. So by the time the mother was dying, it came to them as a very big shock. Because, by the way, she died on June 10th, but on the 1st of June. She was part of the, the, the people who attended church here. We were together in this church. Even on the very last Sabbath, which was the following on 8th of June, we again attended a service in a nearby church. So she was in pains, yes, but she could still afford to come to church. And it was shocking, not only to children, but to the rest of the society and church members, because you can imagine somebody, you are, you, like today you are seated in, 
with someone, someone in church, then on Monday, you receive information that she has died. So it was not, not only to the children, but to everybody. And uh, that death, rudely ambushing them out of their ignorance, ushered us as a family into a long mourning period. And this mourning took uh, different forms. Basically, there is that what I, what I should call the passive mourning, which in a way is represented in what they have said. As long as you are nostalgic about your departed mom, to me, I regard it as part of mourning because it is something which really affects you. Though you may not show it emotionally, but it affects. However, there is the active part of mourning which is now more, most, more significant and which we have been undergoing. For the last three or so years, things have not been very easy because you will see somebody starting just by fretting, just out of the blues, fretting, fuzzing, then in no time, he's sobbing. And before you know it, he's muttering something to the effect that, I want mom. I must admit that nothing tests or has been testing the limits of my fortitude and forbearance more. But as in Daniel chapter 2 verse 28, I like reading that verse very much because I don't know if in the original language of writing the Bible, that is the actual meaning, but in English, as everyone of you knows, when you introduce a new concept, you use an indefinite article, a, ah, before it. So Daniel, introducing Nebuchadnezzar to, I mean, is God to Nebuchadnezzar, said, there is a ah, God, where? In heaven, who reveals mysteries. I love that because Nebuchadnezzar didn't know about Daniel's God, if I'm talking in terms, in matters English, where the article applies. So to me, there is a God in heaven. I would like to introduce to anybody who is in problems similar to mine, who, in, in my case, emboldens me with strength and serenity with which to console these boys. Amen? Amen. And uh, that consolation comes in either sense of the term by 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 making by, by by giving us peace or should I call it serenity as well as strength so God makes us to be serene and to be strong at the same time because of that and as a, as a result of that we've been moving from strength to strength even as we heal. Amen? Amen? Yeah. I was also asked a question on what helped I was asked a question, a question on what helped me to heal or to overcome the crisis. Number one, I should say God's word. God's word was a major shield to the, in, in this crisis. Uh, it was and it still is because the Bible is full of promises on resurrection, on Jesus' second coming, and they can, however, only make sense. That's what I discovered. If, for example, when, when we're talking about Jesus' second coming, it only makes sense if you move from the corporate expectation aspect of waiting for Jesus to come, you move from that corporate aspect to individual anticipation. So you have to customize the promise of Jesus' second return. You have to customize the promise of resurrection. It becomes your very own. That way, it really heals you. you really, it gives you the kind of energy you could otherwise never expect to have. 
I was, I was, by the way, before it happened, I didn't know that such a thing can happen to me. So I, I was, when she was diagnosed, she lived for about two and a half weeks after the diagnosis, then she died. I, actually, for those two weeks before she died, after the diagnosis, I was, I, I, I lived a very fearful life. It was very traumatic to keep on imagining of what was coming. And I could not be sure of how I would handle it when it comes, but when it happens, fortunately, God was at hand to embolden me to move on. So, number two, or, or rather, answering this, the next question was, how have I seen God's hand despite this experience? I will say that God works in his own ways in very miraculous manner because long before my wife was taken ill, she underwent a personal revival and reformation on her own. So she just pulled ahead of us. While in the family worship, we do these routine devotions, my wife developed an appetite of the word on her own. She could devote, she was so devoted in reading the word and meditating and making notes. I could just watch in wonder why she was doing that. But, but, but because it was the right thing, I, I, I could just encourage her to keep doing it. This is the same, same word which kept her surviving a year later when this tragedy struck. Because even after having been diagnosed with cancer, she did not pity herself. I was very surprised. Even on the very, the last 24 hours before she died, she was in great pains. But when I tried to, she was, she, she, as, she, as a caregiver, she could assist, ask me to assist her to sit on her bed properly or to turn her or, to, or, to, or even to take her to a different room, perhaps, to feel if the problem is somehow dissipating, but it did not. And at one time, we had done that. So, uh, we, had, we, had, we had been doing that like, like a cycle over and over again, almost, almost night long. Of course, we had deposited the children to their maternal uncles. They were not around for obvious reasons. She looked at me and told me, do not pity me. Pity your children. Of course, I got the message. She had accepted that finally her life on this earth was coming to an end. So she was assigning me a duty, which I'm performing now. And I've been performing, and I thank you for your prayers. Each time I meet many of you, you encourage me to keep doing it. And it, by God's grace, we've been, we've been moving well. Now, I have to thank God next, because for all that time, by the way, she, she, she had ovarian cancer. That's by the, when the diagnosis indicated. But for all that time, God shielded her from physical pain. She was not under, she didn't, save for the last 24 or so hours, she was not in great, great pains. That was why she could afford to come to church. So that is something I have to thank God for. Because I had, the experience I had for the last 24 hours, if that had been the initial experience all through, things would have been very difficult on the two of us. Number three, I also thank God because by the time he allowed her to die, at least the children were not infants. This young guy was five. And a five-year-old is a very easily manageable person. And I also thank God because, you know, when we reminisce about our past, about her, everybody has something to say. Even this young guy, you may think that he doesn't have a memory, but even if it is a 1GB, is it 1GB or 1MB, it has a lot of information about his mother. And there is something inherently satisfying when reminiscing on such a past to have somebody on his own contribute. I really love that. Number three, 
I, I mean, number four, I also thank God because he has helped these children to positively socialize with the death of their mom. This is not something which will make them cry just because you are mentioning it. You know, during morning, people will come and tell us, pull all these pictures down. People should not, they should not be looking, seeing, seeing the mother's pictures. Those people are so mistaken. Because at one time, of course I didn't do that, but at one time, shortly, around two or three months after, after the death of their mom, I was dropping this young guy to school. He had just, when we got into the vehicle, he was just okay, smiling. School is just a stone throw away from home. But by the time I expected the fellow to arrive, he was sobbing. Why? He told me, I want to, you have to rush me back home. I just want to look at, mom, at my mom's portrait. And when, after that, when he saw it, he became so happy, so pleased. And by the time he was arriving in school, he was the happiest boy on the school compound. So God has helped us in different ways. And uh, <clears throat> this help, I credit God with. The last reason, the most important one is this. Because of this socialization, the death of their mom does not define who they are. The, th the, the death of their mom does not define their day-to-day -day life. They are living life which is full. They are living life which is full of God's blessings. Now, due to, to, to time, let's have been signaled to end there. So may God bless you. And uh, should you find yourself in a similar situation, just trust that there is a God in heaven. In Gen I mean, in the, as in Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, who will take full charge. Thank you very much. And all the time. So today we, we have, as the drama band is coming in, please come in now. We have a number of people who've come to visit with us who are not members of our church. And people who've walked with our friends and our families through this journey, but they don't necessarily worship here. And I know that because of the time, some of them may want to leave. Is it okay if I request that if there are visitors who came today, kindly, please rise. Um, I know, is Dr. Grace in the house? Dr. Grace? Thank you. Thank you very much. Is Mas, is uh, Robert in the house? Is Robert gone? Is there any other visitor who, somebody who has visited with us today um, who is not usually a member of the church or who doesn't worship here? Thank you. We want to say thank you for coming. We want to say thank you that you walked with our friends through this time. Um, we wish we could give you a chance to say something. I am certain that we will um, be doing something a lot more comprehensive hereafter. Uh, but may God bless you and bless you and bless you abundantly. Thank you. Drum abundantly. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Kaiva. Yeah, the lab results are in, and uh, I'm actually taking a look at them now. Yeah, the x-rays, I can clearly see. I can clearly see the x-rays, and I'm expecting some of my patients to come in right now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the lab results are in. I think you can come in any moment now. 
Uh-huh. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't know how to re actually read these things. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Just one moment. I think I have a couple of clients scheduled right now. They might be walking in any minute now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hello, Dr. Kaiva. How are you? Hello, Mrs. Okinda. Hi. Welcome. Uh, Mr. You. Benjamin? Okay. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Mr. Benjamin and Mrs. Okinda. How may I help you today? Um, so we are here today to... We have come back for the results, as you know, and uh, I thought you needed to speak to us. Yes, I actually needed to speak to both of you. You may have a seat. Thank you. You may have a seat. Welcome to my office. And uh, don't mind this. This is just some other clients' results. Yes, as I said, I needed to speak to both of you. As you are well aware, and uh, we, actually did the result, we actually did the surgery last month to Mr. Benjamin, which was very successful. We managed to remove all of the cancer tissue from his lungs, and as I clearly mentioned, that was just the first step. Dr. So now, Kaiva, just, just be honest with me. Am I in the clear? As I was saying, Mr. Benjamin, this was just the first step. We did the surgery. It was very successful. Now we need to take you through a round of chemotherapy whereby we can be able to remove all possible cancer cells that might have metastasized to all of the rest of the cancer tissues, even in the lung tissues itself, so that we can remove any possibility of the cancer coming back. So that is what we need to do next. So the surgery was just step one. There is step two, which is the chemotherapy. So for how long will he be on treatment? Judging by the results, Mr. Benjamin is going to be on the treatment for four weeks. It, the chemo regimen is going to take a couple of four weeks whereby he will get to experience a bit of side effects. One of them is nausea, uh, general body weakness, and uh, he's also going to experience a bit of fatigue and hair loss. That is also going to be a very major thing. And once in a while, he can get to experience a bit of tingling on his arms and feet. But everything is going to be well. We'll give him the right medicine to make sure that he gets well as soon as possible. Do I, have to ad do I have to be admitted to get the treatment? Not really, not really. As you clearly saw, when you came into the hospital, on your right, there was an IV center, whereby you can clearly go there, get the chemotherapy administered via IV drip, and I strongly advise that you go with your mother. Your mother will clearly monitor you to make sure that you have the right treatment, and will assign you a caregiver. The caregiver will once in a while come at home, take care of you, see how the progress is faring on, and report back to us. You remember Fiona? Oh, yes, I do. Such a nice girl. Yes. That would be wonderful. That would be amazing. Dr. Kaiva? I want you to be honest with me. What are my chances of survival? Mr. Benjamin, as I clearly mentioned, the chances of you surviving are pretty good. In fact, they are so good that since the surgery went well, and once we administer the chemo, you'll be in the clear. So you need to trust in us. Let us be hopeful. With all due respect, doctor, that's not what I meant. Do you honestly believe that I'm going to make it. Mr. Benjamin, trust in the medicine. Let us not jump into any conclusions or any speculations. As I mentioned, let us have hope. Once we administer the medicine and we do the chemotherapy, you will be in the clear. So, 
allow me to leave. I need to get a couple of documents that both of you need to sign, just like this one, and then I will be back. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kaiva, for everything you're doing to us. Thank you so much, Mrs. Okinda. Mr. Benjamin, all will be well. I will be back in a jiffy so that I can bring you back all of the forms that I need you to sign. So just in case you're wondering what the forms look like, this is what it actually looks like. And uh, we do not want to take any form of liability on what is going to happen. As I said, good sir, trust in the medicine. Ben? 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 Yeah, ma'am. What's on your mind? What are you thinking about this time? It's, it's nothing, it's nothing. I'm just emotional over nothing. I, I, I just want to get out of here, you know? Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. I understand, it's okay. We're going to get through this. I know, ma'am. I know. Dunia mate so na shida nyingi zitaisha lini ili nipumzike dunia mate so na shida nyingi zitaisha lini Ili ni pumzike ni mefika mwisho Mungu baba uninuwe ili ni sizame ni mefika mwisho Mungu baba uninuwe Uli ni sizame ni mefika mwisho Mungu baba uninuwe ili ni sizame Well, here we are, Fiona. Welcome to our home. And I want to thank you so much for the care you have given my son while he was in hospital. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mrs. Okinda. And it's not a problem. I'm glad I get to watch his recovery uh, journey up close. And uh, Ben, tomorrow you're going to come to the hospital. We'll go for the treatment. Then we'll come back here together. Uh, after which I'll be popping in from time to time just to see how you're doing. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, um, sh sure, sure. Uh, listen, Fiona, I thank you very much for the care that you gave me and the help that you gave me. I, I don't know how I can repay you. I really appreciate it. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. You're welcome. So that is, that is it, and I'm glad you're getting better slowly. So Thanks. I'll just head back to the, to the, to the hospital then I think that is it for No, now. no, no. You could stay for lunch. That's the least we can do. You really should say yes because my mom never takes no for an answer, mm -hmm. especially when she invites someone for lunch. I'm so sorry, but I can't today. But tell you what, Mrs. Okinda, I'll be here tomorrow and I'll take you up on your offer. Well, fair enough, Fiona. I'll hold you to that, remember. <laughs> Great negotiating skills. You actually got her to reconsider. Mm -hmm. You're super talented, aren't you? I am. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was nice uh, coming here with you, so I'll have to go back to the hospital. But before I forget, um, Ben, there's, there's something I wanted to give you. If you're not occupied later, you can come to the hospital, first floor, um, big yellow door to your, to your right. Um. What goes on over here? Oh, I normally hold a support group for people who have or have had cancer, and you get to talk about uh, your experience. Thanks, 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 but um, <laughs> no thanks. I understand that you're trying to help, but I'll be okay without a support group. I'm fine. I understand, yeah. but 
in the event you change your mind or still want to talk, my number is also on that piece of paper. Bye. Bye. Hmm, you're losing your edge. What do you mean? She clearly likes you. Even a blind person could see that. But you, I even tried doing you a favor by asking her to stay for lunch. Mom, 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 I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to set me up with a nurse because you think there's more to life even if I have cancer. It's her job to be nice to people like me. Even with that support group. I'm not a charity case. I, I can't. Well, it's nice to have you back here. Yeah, well, home, home sweet home. You know, um, you've not been here since, <laughs> since your father. Well, I'm, I'm just emotional, but excited that you're home. Anyway, I have to go to the store and get some supplies. I'll be back um, in a little bit. You're sure you're okay here? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, see you in a bit. Tatizo mengi usingizi huna wakata tama mipango yote matarajio hayafu itafu masikitiko usife moyo mtazame Yesu Mkimbilie Upendo wake Una kipimo Ulinzi wake Utatishika Uwezo wake Hata milele Hata angaika Hey, uh, Chad, Chad, um, how are you? Um, yeah, yeah, um, I'm home. Um, yeah, I'm home. I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm okay. Um, we're going to, to start the chemo soon. No, 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 you don't need to come over. Hi, hey, hey, sis, um, how are you? Um, how's Canada? Yeah, um, uh, I'm home. Uh, yeah, we, we, we were, we just talked to the doctor and he said that we'll start the um, uh, chemo. Yeah. No, 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 you don't need to book a flight to come over. I, <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm doing fine. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I'm tired, I... I just want to rest. I will, um, yeah, I, I have a lot on my mind and, uh, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll call you later. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Akupenguvu mpe miziko atakuinua You love me. I know you care for me. I know you worry about me. But I want you to stop. 
my heart can't take it. I've had my fill from the cup of despair. My eyes, like wells, run dry. Floods of tears have reached these parts. I know you love me. I know you care for me. I know you worry about me. But you have no idea how it feels to go through what I go through. And it wouldn't be fair if I expect you to. I know I sound like a boy crying over a splinter. But this wooden speck that split in my flesh is a poison. Like the gust of wind, the sands of time tumble over each other, draining the last drop of hope I had left to cope. I know you love me. I know you care for me. I know you worry about me. You try to warm me up with love, but my heart has turned cold and it's frozen my faith in place. Like the cancer that I have, I too have become a cancer to my friends and family, a burden. And yet, I don't want to be. You try to tell me that you understand me, that you get me, that you feel me, you feel for me, that life can be wonderful, life can be great, life is a gift, life is pain. I wake up in pain. I go to sleep in pain. I think of pain. I dream of pain. You see a smile, but all I see is pain. I know you love me. But I don't. <laughs> so this is how you felt all this time you said you were okay? Why don't you talk to me? It's not okay for you to feel these things alone without telling me. Mom, I'm sorry, but you don't understand how it feels to go through what I go through. You just don't get it. It's painful. If there's anyone who understands what you're going through, it's your father. But he's not here now, and if he was here, he wouldn't have wanted you to give up. Please don't do this. Don't do what, mom? Don't do what? Don't give up. Do you know how many times I wanted to end this on my own? End this suffering on my own? Before the surgery, even right now as you speak, do you know how many times I want to end? You don't get it. You don't get it. Listen. I lost my husband. I lost your father to cancer. Do you think I want the same for you? I lost the man who made me the happiest by giving me you. And you think I'm not scared of losing both of you to the same illness? Remember the times I spent in hospital, crying myself to sleep beside you. And you think I don't understand? Look, mom. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to shout. I'm, I'm just going through a lot. I just... I remember the day we got the diagnosis like it was yesterday. I didn't know what to do. I fumbled over my words. I couldn't even speak. When I looked at your father's face, he was clearly shaken. But he kept on telling me how we're going to get through this. He held out hope for me when I was the one who was supposed to hold out hope for him. And that hope, Ben... That hope is what we need to get through these tough days. You hear me? I hear you, mom, but dad died of cancer two years ago after the doctor said, after the doctor promised he had a good chance of surviving. And here I am, stage two lung cancer, 50 to 60% chance survival rate in five years. And knowing, knowing what happened to dad, you think I have the luxury of being hopeful. 
I, I don't know what to feel. I know you're scared, but I am too. But why don't you talk to me or even your friends? I don't want anyone to worry. Listen, I don't want anyone to worry because if they don't worry, then I won't worry. And if I pretend that this is not happening, maybe, maybe it will go away. My boy. I'm scared, mom. I know I'm so you're scared. scared. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. Listen, I know you're scared. I am too. But we need each other to get through these tough days. Remember, Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those who trust in the Lord will renew their strengths. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and never get tired. They will walk and not grow faint. Trust in the Lord, my dear. He knows our pain. He understands our trouble. There's absolutely no reason to doubt the Lord. You understand? I understand. What, do, what would I ever do without you? Of course. I love you, Mom. I love you too, always. Oh, and so about Fiona. Mom, not this again. You're still trying to set me up with her. Come on, who said I cannot be your wingman or even your wingwoman? <laughs> I know you would do a good job. Okay, I think you should give the um, support group thing a trial. And because I'm here for you and you can talk to me, but you still need people who have gone through what you've gone through, who understand your situation better than I do. You know what? I think I'll give this a try. I'll see you later, Mom. Okay, I'll see you too. Bye. As the children will be singing, we'd like to ask the deacons to rise. And what we're requesting for is that these friends of ours, those who are still in the fight, that we can afford them something. That what the Lord has blessed us with, a little, we can share with them. So my dear deacons, as the children are singing this song, kindly um, help us to lift an offering. After this, I'd like to ask the family of Jerry. The family of Jerry are going to share with us the caregiver's perspective. So immediately after this song, kindly... Jerry, we will have made the stage for you with Florence and the children. You're welcome.
I may not know the trials you're going through today. The pain, the sorrow, the heartache. But though the mountains crumble and the oceans rage and war against my soul, the devil may wage. Though the tempest has turned my smile upside down and my life like a river of sorrow in which I drown, yet will I stand unshaken for as long as it lasts. Faithful is he that has promised, and it shall come to pass, that if God be for us, then who can stand against? The God who spoke all the earth into form, he said, let there be light, let it be bright, let there be day, let there be night. Out of the sound of his voice, birds, fish, and trees did come. The mountains, they melt like wax, the hills skip like young cows, all are the sound of the voice of the God that we serve. Our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Besides thee, O oh Lord, we have no other God.
Jerry. So I was, I was, um, Malika, who is now coming up front together with the dad and the mom and the brother, Malika had this to say about her mom. She said, my mom is my biggest inspiration in life. I aspire to be like her. There goes Malika's mom. And Jabari's mom. She's one of the kindest people I know. I can confide in her about anything. Jabari had this to say about the mother, Florence. He said, my mom is a very fun person by character. She always comes home in a good mood, even if the day was not good as it should have been. I like that I can talk to mom about anything and still feel safe. And Jerry had this to say about his dearest. He said, Flo is the true helpmate, suitable for me as it was intended to be. Super strong, supportive, and absolutely fair. Even willing to take turns with me as her caregiver. So this last part is the story of those who have spent, like I said earlier, days and hours and, and weeks and years giving care to their loved ones. After this, we will have the mass choir. Um, our apologies deeply to the other songs that were supposed to be sung. We've cut everything else. We'll have the mass choir, and then we'll have the vote of thanks in the prayer session from our dear pastor. For now, this is a story of Florence, as told by the caregiver. Karibu sana. Thank you. Happy Sabbath and good evening. I know we have a very short time to share a very long story, so we'll do our best to compress it. Uh, first of all, by introduction, far, far right, my right, is Malika. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Yeah, and then... Florence. Happy Sabbath. And Jabari. Happy Sabbath. Now, and I'm Jeremiah Siage. Three of us were caregivers. Uh, I think I need to disclose who was receiving the care. It's Florence who was receiving the care. And our story began pretty much around the time when COVID hit this country. In the early part of March, year 2020, uh, Florence was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And uh, the story began that way. While everybody was very busy worrying about COVID, uh, we as a family had something a bit more personal to deal with. And we did our best to give Florence the care that she needed. Uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't uh, anything we had done before, so a lot of things were new to us, and we needed a lot of help, and God made that available to us. Um, I just want to answer a few questions that would probably give you an insight into what we are talking about here. Um, if I was to share my experience, I would say it started with some extreme and deep fear because the news of a cancer diagnosis was not a light one to deal with, and it was not even clear to me how I should react, but I realized I was the head of the family, and I needed to be strong, and I needed to be calm. Uh, I don't think I showed any sign of fear to any of them, but deep inside, I was extremely fearful. Uh, it, was not, it was not 
even clear what the process would involve. So soon we were hit with the reality of this is what the diagnosis is, and we needed to do scans and lab tests, and they would tell you some of them would, be, would take three weeks, and uh, it was one test after another. So we are doing all this, and COVID has just hit the country, and the hospitals were getting more strict. At some point, we could not even get face masks. So I remember improvising a face mask for the two of us because we had to see the doctor and we could not get a face mask. So we made some using some tissue paper and rubber bands. And that's what we used because we had to go into the hospital. We also had to, you know, go into places. And I want to just uh, mention one incident. Nairobi Hospital was literally closing down non-essential services, and that included all the doctors' clinics and the theaters. So the surgery came, it was scheduled for the 27th of March, and that was the last day that theaters would ever be open. And we only managed to get that slot because the doctor, the surgeon, was able to influence a few things and get that slot available. And that got the treatment started before they actually close the theater. Otherwise, we would have waited, I don't know for how long, before the surgery would be done. After that, of course, was the chemotherapy, which was really challenging. Uh, if you look at the screen right now, that was one of the effects of the chemotherapy. A few weeks into chemotherapy, all the hair fell off. And I don't know what that means to you, but to, I, know, I know to ladies, that means a lot. For us we would consider it a blessing, being men. But for ladies, it wasn't easy. But thank God, uh, it wasn't a permanent loss. Uh, as you can see, the hair has all grown back. We went on, and we actually do thank God for all his provisions. I just want Florence to share a few things before I get into some details of how we saw the hand of God come through, because that was really personal and quite evident in our lives around that time. Flo. Okay, thanks, thanks, Jerry. Okay, I'd like to basically say that um, this journey for me was uh, made easy by three things that I'll call the three Ps. Prayer, being practical, and being positive, and also adding some humor to it. Um, if you notice, there's a picture of mine where my hair is completely bald. I just wanted to show you people the day when Jerry's hair was longer than mine. <laughs> and it will probably be the only time his hair will be longer than mine. Um, but anyway, for in the aspect of prayer, I really valued the prayers that um, everybody, my friends, family, um, I would also say especially my mom also, Mrs. Zilpa Bila, she really prayed and was sharing the, a lot of the word with me, sending a lot of verses to me. I had my own verses and she added some, and I will end with one. Um, but I also have to appreciate a group of women that I used to pray with. They are called Adventist Women of Faith. Some of them are here. I think I saw prom somewhere. Um, so to begin with, you need to just be prayerful. And then, in terms of being practical, I am not an oncologist, so I made sure that I took my doctor's instructions. I didn't think um, chemotherapy was the best thing for me because I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer, but it was an aggressive type of cancer. And hence the reason, um, when I actually thought that I was gonna finish, again, if you notice in one of the pictures, I'm in heels that day because I was celebrating my last day of chemo. Uh, but it wasn't that. <laughs> I was supposed to do nine more. And, and I guess that is where my positive spirit had to kick in. Um, I've always been positive. When people talked to me, I would never talk to them as if like I'm, I'm about to die or anything. I just kept the faith and I knew that I needed to beat this because Jabari was 12 and a half months at the time, 12 years, six months at the time, and Malika was 10 years, two months. And so for me, I was 
probably negotiating with God that I need to be here for them a little longer. And he's answered my prayers at least for these few years. I call myself a cancer conqueror, not a warrior. I believe I claimed victory over cancer. And that is what I continue to do. I will just read a verse from Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24. Jesus said to them, have faith in God. I can guarantee this truth. This is what will be done for someone who doesn't doubt but believes what he says will happen. He can say to he can say to this mountain, be uprooted and thrown into the sea, and it will be done for him. That's why I tell you to have faith that you have already received whatever you pray for. So I choose hope over fear for sure. Thank you. So prayers do get answered, and our prayer and my prayer was answered I just want to pick four main things that demonstrate that prayers did get answered in 2020 for me. Number one, God enabled a very early diagnosis, which made treatment a lot easier, a lot more manageable. Uh, it was not easy. It would not be easy to detect. But in Florence's case, God actually gave us an external sign. And that made the diagnosis very quick and the treatment much easier. Number two, he also availed to us what I would think are the best doctors available in the country. Uh, and they were available for us even with COVID. I remember the surgeon would tell us because we needed to go for reviews and some care after the surgery. He would open the clinic specifically to see us, and after that, he would shut it again and go home. We thank God for that. Number three, God took charge of my calendar. Ordinarily, I travel like half the time, uh, but for that time, because of COVID and other reasons, uh, everyone was grounded. No one was traveling, me included. So I had all the time to give all the care I needed uh, to give to Florence. And finally, the Almighty God availed the resources that were needed for the treatment. And this was through various sources, from our savings, from insurance covers, from friends, from relatives. We never lacked, and we thank God for that. Finally, what would I tell other caregivers? I think my piece of advice to any caregiver is find out what needs to be done. Do your best as a caregiver, but acknowledge that you're human and therefore limited, and leave the rest to the Almighty God. He is the ultimate caregiver. God bless you. Thank you, Malika. Thank you, Florence. Thank you, Jerry and Jabari. As the... For the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of... For the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of... Of... And of a... And of a sound mind. Um, thank you for listening to the stories of these people. What we've agreed is we will do a recording of those who have not been able to share today because of time, and we will find an appropriate time for them to share. In the meantime, being the hosts of this um, concert, the Glorious Chorale, have insisted that they have to sing a, a song called Guide Me. Once this song is over, mass choir, church choir kindly come, youth choir kindly come, so that we sing I Can Only Imagine together. And then Pastor Tirop will come and pray for us. Thank you.
T is for thankfulness in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. First Thessalonians 5.18. Amen. H is for honor to God. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Psalms 50 verse 15. A. A is for answer to prayers. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Amen? Amen. N is for needs met. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Philippians 4 verse 19. Amen? Amen. K is for... K is for kindness. In Psalms 117, verse 2, we read that we shall praise the Lord for his merciful kindness is great towards us. Amen? Amen. S, S is the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 reminds us that God lives in us. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and, and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Amen? G, G is for goodness and grace that God gives to each of us. Other man will thank the Lord for his goodness and wonderful works to the children of men. Psalms 107 verse 31. Amen. Amen. I, I is for inviting. According to 1 Peter 5 verse 7, we are invited to cast all our cares upon Jesus because he cares for us. Amen. Amen. V is for vine. Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. Without, for without me, you are nothing. Amen. I, I is for inheritance. Romans 8, 17 talks about the inheritance of the body of believers. It says that, now, if we are the children of God, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We share in his suffering that we may also share in his glory. Amen. N. N is for the name of Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 14, Jesus says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen? Amen. G. G is for giving generously. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. And it says, Whoever sows spare, sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen.
blind. I can oh.
Praise the Lord. Amen. You want me to join you? Hallelujah, church. It is indeed a special moment, a moment where we enter into those experiences of the families whom we know so dearly. And we thank the Lord for working for the miracles he has performed and for working with those whom have had not so glorious an experience. All the same, we are before the Lord and his mercies are new every morning. Um, before I invite Pastor Gerald Machoge, who is in our midst, I request that I read two, three verses actually. It says this, my brethren, that is James chapter 1, verse 3, no, verse 2 to 4, and then 12. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Indeed, we can only imagine what heaven will be like. Pastor, please come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, good evening and happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy, happy Sabbath again. Happy day. Thank you very much. It's nice to see every one of you. Um, my daughters are up here somewhere and uh, they did mention to me that we have a Hope concert at Nairobi Central SD Church and for one of their colleagues, Alvin Ogonda. And I said, why not? I've got to join together with them. But in joining together with them, here I am. I'm listening to experiences of our brother Jerry, Siage, and Sipatati, and the others. And like the mass choir has sung, I can only imagine. I remember some three, four years back, I stood right on this podium when my father was also going through this experience. And when he was mentioning about caregiving, Again, I can only imagine, but I like the words that Jerry has finished with when he said, the greatest caregiver is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may that hope be our hope tonight, even as we finish this hope concert, that we may be filled with hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tirop, for that. Let's all rise for the closing prayer. Amen. Shall we bow our heads as we pray together? Eternal God and Heavenly Father, at the close of a Sabbath day, each one of us as the family of God, your children, we gather together in your presence with our hearts filled with gratitude, knowing that you care for us. We are thankful this afternoon, rather this evening, in knowing that when our hope is taken away by the wails of the enemy, you are always there to lift it up every moment. When strength in us wastes away, you're there to grant us strength by the day. When our bodies are always being chewed by the sickness of this world, your grace in us strengthens us by the day. Amen. We are thankful, Heavenly Father, in knowing that in times of weakness, your grace is sufficient. Mm. You have reminded us this evening through 
the sentiments mentioned through your word, through the songs that have been sung, through the drama band, and the experiences of those that have gone through caregiving and the cancer patients themselves, that there is hope in you. Mm. Tonight, Lord, we hold on to the hope given to us in your word and also in your promises because we know you're faithful, you who promises. And tonight, as each one of us leaves your sanctuary, help us to hold on to that hope. Amen. My brother, my sister, young and old, there's hope for you when you hold on to Christ Jesus. There's hope for you when you hold on to his promises. There's hope for you even when life shows no meaning. There's hope for you when sickness takes away. There's hope for you when strength goes low. There is hope in life. Christ Jesus, I say, there's hope for you. And so tonight I pray, my Lord, enable us to walk out of this sanctuary with hope filled in our hearts that, my Lord, we may settle at peace knowing you are there for us. Thank you for little Alvin. And Lord, we commit him unto you. Amen. Thou has been faithful in the past. You'll be faithful in the present. Mm. I've just had an experienced testimony from one of my friends that most of the experiences of young children, 75% who are cancer patients, pediatrics, they are always healed. Mm. May one of those percentages be Alvin Ogondas. Amen. Loving Father, we remember many others whom we cannot mention their names at this moment. As you remember Alvin, may theirs be the experience too. Mm. That someday in the future they may stand in this pulpit to share testimony that you came through for them. Amen. Like our sister Florence. Mm. Now, Heavenly Father, as we part ways, let us part ways not just from your presence, but even as we part ways from each other, grant that we may be bound together with cords of love that can never be broken. Mm. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us blameless before the matchless name of our Father above. To him alone be glory, majesty, and dominion, now and ages to come. In his name we pray. Amen. And now may the grace of, of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the and love of God, God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and, and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Before we leave, before we leave, um, Eric has something. For the families that have graciously shared today and the ones who didn't have a chance and Daktari Magoma, um, we ask that you stay behind for just two minutes um, here in front after this. But thank you so much for the courage that you gathered to share and the willingness to be vulnerable. We are grateful. May the Lord bless you.